Hey, this is Mikey Borup for PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change someone's eye color. So for this footage, this guy has, you know, bluish eyes, and what I shot this for was for a commercial for a local credit union, and they wanted him to be an older version of a younger actor and the younger actor had brown eyes and he had blue eyes and so I needed to change the color of his eyes and it's a really easy process to do so how you do this is simply with motion tracking and tracking on a you know a color onto the eye and let me show you how to do that so first I have this footage here it's just five seconds of footage I needed so let's click on the footage bring up the tracker and if you don't have that up go to window and tracker and turn it on now with this I'm actually going to do two tracks instead of one because you know he's got two eyes and if we look through the footage it's you know kind of shaky and he is kind of slightly moving his head and so the relationship between the the distance between the two eyes aren't going to stay constant because he's moving his head to the one side so I could just do one track and I could probably make it work but we'll just do two tracks to make sure it's perfect so click on the footage I'm going to select track motion and it brings you into the tracker. Now, how this tracker works is it brings up this little point with a crosshairs and then two boxes. The point in the middle is that point to which everything is tracked to. That is the point where it applies the motion. Now, this inner box is what it's looking to track and the outer box is where it's looking to track it. So, if there's lots of movement, you need to have a really large outer box if there's not a lot of movement then it can be smaller and the larger the outer box the more time it's going to take to track now also if your movements mostly vertical well then you can do a box that's mostly vertical if it's mostly horizontal you can go that way so it doesn't have to be a square box so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tracker and I'm going to have the inner box be about the same shape as the eye so it's looking for this pattern of colors and contrast and then the outer box I'm gonna make about that big and this should go fairly quickly let's just check it out so in order to track first thing I like to make sure that my playhead is at the beginning of the clip so you don't get a little bit confused and then I'm just tracking position on this one if I were to do rotation and scale it would bring up another track point and then it would apply the rotation and scale of the track to whatever you're applying the tracking data to but for this one I just want position so here it's going now when you're tracking I always like to keep my finger right on the space bar just in case the track goes crazy and it decides not to track properly then you can stop it go in fix it and then start the track again and I can see it's going a little slow so what I can do is you know what this is probably too big of a outer bounding box let's bring that in and you'll see how much faster it goes so the size of this outer bounding box really determines the speed of your track but depending on how fast your subject is moving you may need to have that quite large but as you can see I can I can move it around in the middle of the track so if there's maybe just a single part of your footage that needs that well then I can I can have a larger bounty box for that part and I can bring it back in and go for the fast track okay so there's the track completely done and what I want to do is I want to go and add a new null object and then let's edit the target in the track make sure it's applied to that null object click OK and click apply and it'll ask you apply dimensions X and Y click yes so what we have here is that null object is tracked completely perfect to the eye now we need to go back and track the other eye to do this so let's go back into the eye color I'm just going to delete the old track let's go back in and do another track this one will put on the other eye
So you can see there's two null objects tracked right to the eyes. Now let's bring in you know, a color solid to change the color of the eye. Now his eyes are kind of a blue and I want them to be brown. And so basic color theory, let's do a new solid. If I look if I look right here where blue is, right, there's blue. So opposite of blue is going to be over here in this area, more towards the yellow, right? So when you add opposites together, it's going to bring it more dark. It's going to bring it more brown. So I want this to be kind of a yellowy hint of a brown. And let's go about right there. Click OK. And then let's just turn this off so we can see what we're doing. And I'm just going to grab the circle mask and mask right over the eye. Make sure you're at the beginning of the playhead as well. So let's turn this back on and then let's change the transfer mode. Transfer mode that I found works the best is soft light. And it seems to get most of the black and the highlights to kind of show through. And then let's go into the mask, hit F for feather, and let's just slightly feather this. And then also we can go in and let's adjust the mask shape. And I still think that's looking a little bit big. Oops. And I also like to just take these null objects and hide them. And you can see it's moving around because what I didn't do is I need to take this and I need to now parent it to null number one. And what that's going to do is it's going to track it right to the eye. And that looks pretty good. So let's go in and create the second eye. So I can just take this solid, duplicate it, and then parent it to null number two instead. Now let's go in and just move this. Get the the mask adjusted and that one doesn't look quite as right for some reason the way the light landed on it it doesn't look as good so I can go back into the solid settings and let's make this a darker brown click OK and let's check it out that's looking pretty good and you can't even tell that those used to be blue eyes so now that we have this tracking data applied we can do some other things for instance there's a bit of a red spot right here and what I want to do with this is I want to cover this up with his skin but as, as we look through this footage you can see the color of his skin kinda changes because of shadows and things like that so what I need to do is I need to track this footage again but I need to stabilize it so I'm going to take this original footage, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'll turn off the uh, the sound on that layer, and let's go in and stabilize motion. So I just need to stabilize just with one point is fine. Let's click forward. And the reason why I need to stabilize it is because I'm going to use this now, this video, as a patch to cover up that red spot. And if it's moving around, then it's not going to fit just right. So I need to stabilize this motion, create the patch, and then apply it to the tracking data of the track from before. And you'll see this in a minute. All right. So let's edit the target. It needs to be to that eye color. Make sure it's the right one, not the, the lower one. Click Apply. And it looks a little weird because it's stabilized, but everything's kind of moving around. So what we need to do is take this eye color, the one that we just stabilized for the patch. Let's pre-compose it. Let's give it a new name. Move, make sure you move all of the attributes. And then what we have here is a single unmoving composition. And what I can do is I can take this. Let's take this mask tool. 
I want to mask right about here because that's a very similar color region to right there. And then let's take this and then just move it over top of that red spot. Let's then feather the mask a little bit and then take that patch and let's parent it to null 1. Now I can go into this mask and say I, I need it to be expanded out a little bit, maybe a little more feather to kind of blend everything together pretty well. And then that right there is how you do it. So that's, let's just take a quick look. And what we've done here again is we've changed the eye color and we fixed that spot right there on right by his hairline. And we can see there is one little problem right here where the patch you can see it goes over so what I can do easily enough is starting right here let's go into the mask path keyframe that go forward and just kinda of move that down and then as it's going back up I'm just going frame by frame and it doesn't take long. I'm just hitting the page down key on the keyboard to kind of cycle through my frames. So let's quickly review. Um, I did two tracks, one for each eye, um, because his his head was kind of tilting to one side and the relationship distance between each eye was going to change. And it's really not hard to do a track. And then I created a new solid that's kind of a yellowy brown and I used the transfer mode of soft light. Now I experimented with other different transfer modes and soft light was the one I felt looked the most natural. Now if we want to go a step further like I did here to kind of patch some different skin spots you need to do an additional stabilization track like I showed you. So I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions feel free to ask. Just put them down in the comment section below and I will get to them. I'm Mikey Bort for premiumbeat.com and you can follow me on Google Plus is probably the best place to get a hold of me. I'm pretty active on Google Plus, not so much on Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. Google Plus seems to be my main social network. So get a hold of me there. I'm the only Mikey Borup, so it's not hard to find me. And be sure to check out premiumbeat.com, especially their blog. There's lots of tips and tricks and great tutorials, especially for After Effects. And if you need some stock music or stock sound effects, there's no better place than premiumbeat.com. I found that their music and their sound effects are top notch. Thanks for watching and we'll see you around.